everyone. So uh, today I am covering uh, briefly about what are the stored grain pests which are infesting cereals and pulses and other processed storage pr products and their biology and management. So starting with, uh, if we speak about post harvest losses, so uh, yeah, so so I am I am I will be speaking in the perspective of uh, preparing for JRF and. Uh, ISRF for ARS exams. So yes. I'm, I will be highlighting those points. Okay. So with respect to post harvest losses, so usually the average post harvest lo losses, which is usually considered, uh, considered is from FAO data, that is 10% losses. But apart from that, there are different kinds of losses in case like someone asks what is the losses of grains during harvesting or handling or other stages. So I have just listed it like during harvesting, it will be one to 2% during handling it will be nearly uh, 0.5 to 1% threshing transport and during milling it will be 15 to 20% the total losses will be ranged from 24 to 34% so if we consider stored grain pests so they these all these pests will be grouped under two insect orders the majority one is coleoptera so which contributes around more than 60% of the species infesting stored grains or stored products followed by, sorry, it is mistyped, Lepidoptera, nearly 10% of the species, they infest uh, stored products. So coming to factors affecting long-term storage, so it will be possible question during ARS or other exams. So you can simply brief points in these sub three subheadings, you know, like first one, you have to highlight biotic, what are the biotic threats, like insects and mites, and depending on the marks they are asking. Like, for example, if they ask for five marks question, so you can just enlist these points, subheadings, and one or two examples for each. Or if it is for 10 marks, you can go in, in detail, like with species name and other things. So biotic threats include insects and mites, infesting stored products, and uh, fungal organisms and other microbes. So like other molds which, are, uh, which infest grains and products, like rodent species. There are so many rodent species. And birds, so, uh, there are birds, you know, like uh, rock pigeon, and so other species of birds, which usually uh, comes to go down if, if uh, the roofs or other storage structures, prop, uh, they are improperly maintained, you know. And uh, coming to abiotic threats, you know, and uh, if you store grains or maintain uh, infrastructure improperly, so these are the two factors which seriously affect. Sometimes, you know, they may outcross like the impact created by the insect and other organisms. So for the, the first one is temperature. There should be a proper temperature, optimum temperature for storage, which will be good for grain or seed viability and which should be unideal for insects or other organisms. And humidity percent, which is very important in order to maintain grain moisture that control infestation or uh, that prevent infestation and there should be a proper aeration also so in order to save your grain if it is maintained for seed purpose viability is the major factor you have to save it and coming to infrastructure or storage so you can write few points about infrastructure you know like wall structure ceiling aeration you know roof structures uh, and you know like wooden structures used for uh, stacking of the bags and other aspects you can just highlight the storage receptacle receptacles you know storage receptacles means bags or bins or other storage structures you will use so these are the factors you can just highlight based on the the marks selected to the questions coming to stored grain insect pests so we usually classify these insects in two ways you know one is like internal feeders or external feeders and the other way of storage is like primary or secondary storage pests so i have just uh, highlighted it so you can go in detail in like books uh, available. There are ready-made tables available to classify storage pests as internal and external feeders, like our primary or secondary feeders. So these are the lists of pests. So uh, so uh, if I want to go in detail, I will just go one by one. So this is the very important slide. You can keep it. So in using this slide, you can classify in both ways. So internal feeders include rice weevil, lesser grain borer, cigarette beetle, pulse beetle, groundnut beetle, Drugstore beetle, anguimus grain moth, external include like uh, red floor beetle, Indian meal moth, rice moth, kafra beetle, long headed beetle, sawtooth beetle, and uh, secondary include, uh, you know, like uh, in these, the few of the species are primary and these are the secondary. Just uh, you uh, are leaving these things, the rest will be the primary feeders. You know, the secondary feeders are 
saw tooth beetle long headed floor beetle flat brain beetle in case of lepidoptera there will be indian mill moth and kafra beetle also so just i will briefly go uh, one by one starting with uh, rice weevil that is cytophila sorage there are other two species usually you may get these questions in uh, objective kind of question so if you, if they ask for a uh, rice weevil like for maize weevil it will be cytophila geomys and if they ask like granary weevil it will be cytophila granarius so if uh, you want if uh, you need to consider important points about these uh, this insect so you have to concentrate on some stages you know the grubs of this insect is, are usually apodous and uh, this insect both grubs and adults will cause the damage and the typical symptom is irregular holes this is the possible repeated questions you may expect um, in many objective kind of questions irregular holes on the grains and hollowed out grain sometimes they will ask like the entire internal content is uh, fed and only outer pericarp is left intact so that makes grains into hollowed grains you know if you touch them they just squeeze uh, like a balloon so these are the two typical symptoms you have to remember with respect to this insect coming to lesser grain borer rhizopertha dominica so uh, when when it comes to storage pest so you have to remember the common names scientific names sometimes they ask even family or order so the object in objectives you can expect these questions and the subjective if they ask you to enlist in that case based on marks you have to write the answer for example if they are asking for five marks you just go through you just mention you can directly mention uh, scientific names See, if it is for five marks if they ask for 10 storage space you have to use this technique so you have to just uh, instead of writing common name you can write scientific name that will impress the evaluator uh, in a better way so you can if you know scientific name you just go and listing it and if they ask for like uh, 10 marks you just uh, uh, draw a flow chart with uh, scientific name and uh, order you can write for, so considering four pests of coleoptera you can just uh, make a symbol and you can write coleoptera so, so in this way you can answer questions uh, in theoretical part of ars exam so coming to this insect, so the it this insect usually attacks unasked paddy, wheat, maize, sorghum, barley, dried potato, millets. You know the most important question which repeatedly being asked is the unasked paddy. Many times they ask like the which of the store grain pest attacks unasked paddy. It is lesser grain borer, and in this insect also both grubs and adults are damaging stays, and. Uh, typical symptom include circular holes on grain. So as I already mentioned in the previous insect rice we will, the symptom was irregular holes. So here it is circular holes. There are other two insects which cause typical circular holes. So these are the symptoms, you know, like you know, you, you, you don't need to remember everything, you know, in nowadays, in many books, they, uh, books they started uh, in, in order to attract their, uh, attract uh, readers or for, uh, uh, to sell their uh, books in good numbers, the, they start introducing the few typical points and create. They start creating tip, uh, other like exceptional points. So you, I think you not need to worry about it. So you just go through the basics of store gain pests. You have to remember. Many times they ask basic questions. So it includes like name, scientific name, family, or symptoms, or some management, or some conditions favorable, favorable or unfavorable conditions are worst related. So once uh, whenever you are going through storage gain pest, you have to go through very uh, clearly in line by line. You understand them and make a small points. So that will actually help you. So coming to pulse beetles or brookids. So these are the group of uh, uh, insects in uh, brookids. They attack usually the whole grains of pulses. You know, like you have to remember uh, brookids usually they don't infest the processed or dal, you know, unless there is a selection, complete selection. If they feel that there is no host, sometimes they drop eggs. You know, the species Acanthus silides, Aptectus, it is monophagous and common bean or rajma, what we call this insect. What it will do whenever there will not be any host, sometimes it drops eggs outside. You know, once the uh, crawlers uh, after hatching, they go on searching grains up to like. Uh, half meter or one meter distance. If they don't find, they will die. Otherwise, they search for host. In case of pulse beetles, in pulse beetles, they usually prefer whole grain. That to seed coat for egg laying. You have to remember these points. So, if you store your pulses in the form of dal, they usually they rarely infest dal. That to depend on dal size. For example, if it is like kabuli chickpea or a desi chickpea with bold grain size with a a, a bold dal, 
so it will assess the size of dal so if if it feels that this dal is enough to uh, su support development of its young ones sometimes it will lay otherwise in the in general case it prefer whole grain and in, this insects are in this insect also the grub will be the only damaging stage adults are non feeding stage and uh, this, uh, to remember other points uh, with respect to brookids you know like there are several species of brookids they attack uh, stored pulses and this is also one insect uh, apart from rice weevil and some other moths they usually start their infestation from field you have to remember that they they are the example for field to storage field carrier insects so in brookids there are several species which comes under genus kelasobrucus and there are species which comes under brucus brookidias and there is one species of uh, brookid which usually you can see in western and eastern ghats of india in southern parts that is kelasobrucus theobrome that is the one species which is nowadays it is predominant in hilly areas like western ghats so you have to remember these points coming to groundnut tamarind or peanut brookid so this insect usually attacks uh, uh, like uh, tamarind pods or groundnut so the species include caradon serratus so you have to remember the family there were some earlier names you have to remember sometimes like you know the uh, the person who is drawing question sometimes he may ask some older name also name of this insect and you know brookids and this groundnut beetles it is also brookid they they uh, make a typical circular holes on grains so unlike uh, uh, rice we will and it is one of the largest beetles there will be some expected questions about the size of insect you know smallest insect uh, so if you speak smallest it is minutus cryptolite and minutus if it is uh, if they ask largest beetle it will be like groundnut beetle or tamarind beetle and they ask even longest insect also which is the longest store grain pest so you have to remember these points so if this insect also grub is the damaging stage so if i am going very fast you can just uh, tell me so i can uh, go slow so otherwise i will share this slide so it will be useful for students also i can share this, share it later okay sir is it okay madam am i too yes, fast yes sir or? yes sir it's no sir it's okay sir okay okay thank you so coming to cigarette beetle it is uh, lasioderma sericarne the family is anobidae so in case of this insect also the damaging stages are both grubs and adults so for this insect you have to remember this one pin head holes for this insect also and also drug store beetle this in insect causes usually kind of short hole borers are like pin head holes they are also in circular shape usually they ask this question and they are also smaller smaller insects coming to drug store beetle stegobium panaceum so this insect also belongs to anobidae so in case of this insect also grub is the damaging stage and you have to remember circular pinnaed sized bore holes on the stored products so i am i am not going through detailed biology i think you can go through books and uh, you know you cannot remember everything if i tell today only so better you, uh, students can uh, go through uh, each and every insect in the slides so i just try to cover the important points so that i can cover uh, even management within the time allotted coming to the moth pest you know like lepidopteran pest grain moth or angmos grain moth so they usually ask scientific name of this or family so many times they ask family and the uh, with respect to biology a point to be remembered is hibernation this insect usually hibernate in pupal stage during winters you can see the pupas of this insect in your storage structures you know receptacles or walls or stored grains and uh, in case of uh, damaging stage uh, developmental stage it will be larva or caterpillar and uh, the with respect to infestation the infestation by this moth will be confined to upper 30 cm depth of grains if you are maintaining in big stacks like like 1000 tons or in metric tons so there will be peripheral or surface infestation up to 30 cm depth and grains will be covered with lot of scales so this is the ident uh, detection parameters you have to remember and uh, sometimes the severe infestation gives unpleasant smell coming to floor beetles there are like uh, uh, many many other floor beetles also the few important are red rust floor beetle that uh, that is you know re, uh, tribolium castaneum and other uh, other species of this insect is confused floor beetle
दो मिनट दो मिनट के बाद कंफ्यूजम यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर सम की डिफरेंसेस बिटवीन दीज टू स्पीसियस यू नो लाइक वन इज इन केस ऑफ ट्राइबोलियम कैस्टेनियम इट कंटेन्स फंक्शनल विंग्स एंड इन केस ऑफ कंफ्यूजम दिस स्पीसियस कंटेन्स मीन्स इट वोट कंटेन एनी फंक्शनल विंग्स and uh, you have to remember antennal character of these two species the for castanium it will antenna will be gradually thickened three segmented and in case of confusion the antenna will be suddenly bulged in case of uh, tip and this insect uh, in this is insect also the adults and grubs are the uh, damaging stages and the important thing to remember for uh, infestation detection is disagreeable odor due to the gas this insect produces that is gaseous quinone Coming to other lepidopteran moth, that is rice moth, so which is very common, and I think everybody will remember the scientific name and family or common name of this insect. No issue in that. And uh, for this insect, also the caterpillar is the only infestation of uh, behavior that is dense webbing of the. grains are pro products so ap uh, apart from causes denning of grains so you have to remember rice moth and other species i will tell yeah so coming to kafir kafir beetle so it's scientific to very हेलो सर हेलो हेलो सर Yes, please wait. I think there is some internet issue. Sir will join soon. हेलो
is now visible, sir. Okay, so I was telling about Kafra beetle. So the other important point is positively thigmotactic. This insect is positively thigmotactic. That means, you know, the grubs carries a lot of hairs on its body. So they are just amenable for touch, you know, like you can use a cloth or gunny bags. You can just uh, wipe a cloth or gunny bag on the grains so you can collect most of the grubs. They get attached to the cloth or gunny bags. So that is called as thigmotactic uh, 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 kind of nature. So this is usually used for the management of this insect in case of open grain lots. And uh, the other uh, important po point for this insect is this insect requires minimum of 16.8% oxygen. So, so it will survive only if there is oxygen content of more than 16% in the storage. So you have to remember this point. Like many times they ask, the uh, Kafra beetle survives under, under the uh, percent more, uh, oxygen content. So they ask like 10%, 15%, uh, 5 or zero percent so you have to opt 15 percent minimum at least sometimes they ask exact number otherwise sometimes they usually ask the round figure so you have to remember this value so that you can opt for the nearest value so in uh, specifically uh, if i speak like in with respect to stages eggs are highly sensitive they need more oxygen than other stages so this is the one uh, uh, lacuna of insect usually it is exploited for management uh, uh, concept. So many times they ask like uh, uh, insect which can be easily managed with uh, low oxygen or asphyxiation or hermetic storage. They ask you can you have to opt this species. Coming to other uh, lepidopteran insect, as I told you, it, it is this insect is also example for dense webbing on grains like uh, rice moth. So it is Indian meal moth, Plodia interpunctella. You have to remember the family name and you know order. You I think you you can answer. The damaging stage will be larva only in this in this species also. And there will be a lot of silicon galleries also. They may ask dense webbing or silicon galleries. So coming to the sawtooth uh, grain beetle, that is Horizophilus surumenansis and other species is also there like Mercator. So uh, uh, the important thing in case of this insect is you have to remember scientific name, family, and damaging stages. So both adults and grubs are damaging stages. And there will be one point uh, they rarely ask that is heating of the excess infestation by this insect causes heating of grains. Coming to long headed floor beetle, I already told you they, they will ask which is the longest insect. And uh, in this species also usually you can, you can expect scientific name or family name and damaging stage that is grubs and adults. There are other uh, so other storage pests, so many times we may consider them as minor, but you, have, you should not forget grain mites. Sometimes they reach a uh, very like economic stage. So there are three species of mites. The first grain mite will be, gray, uh, uh, it is usually called as grain mite, that is Acarus syro. The second one is mold mite, Tyrophagus putricentiae. And third one is Traar hitch mite, that is Pimot Pimotis triticae. So, the, uh, these are the three species. Usually they infest. Sometimes they ask common names and scientific names for five marks. Otherwise, you can expect uh, questions in objectives for mites. And the typical symptoms are the indicating or uh, detection uh, uh, Q is musty order in grains. Whenever the, there will be severe infestation of grains with mites, there will be musty order. And one species that is a red-lagged ham beetle, that is Necrobia rufi fens. This species usually attacks dried fish, dried figs, and dried copra. You have to remember, uh, like uh, once uh, there was a question on this species. And there will be a sp uh, one species of predatory mite, that is uh, uh, Chilolitus malaxensis. And uh, there is other species of predatory mite also, but usually they don't ask about predatory mites. If they ask regarding predatory and parasitoids, predators and parasitoids, they ask in case of like predatory bugs, you know, there is one Jailacoris flavifus bug. It, this is the predatory bug on brookids. Yeah, the, you can see the, the uh, sp this species of predatory bugs in field also. 
on like you know developing parts when uh, matured part whenever there is a brookid infestation there will be movement of these beetles so usually they hide in the hole which is created by brookid emergence and there are several parasitoids they are used under storage so i i don't want to go through them one by one it will take again a one hour but you have to remember the key important egg parasitoids egg parasitoids in case of storage for like cereal stored pets or pulses for example if i speak pulses there is a uscana species that is a egg parasitoid there is one diarnomus species is there so these are all the parasitoids you have to remember the scientific names they will last and uh, there will be one yellow meal worm that is an embryo molitor so the expected question for this species is many times they asked about this desiccation this species is known for highly resistant to desiccation this is in brief about the uh, important species which are infesting stored grains or stored products so uh, coming to the infestation so there will be two types of infestation you know like many times they ask uh, eden infestation what is in a eden infestation are the examples of stored pest species for which are causing eden infestation that is brew kids you know rice we will citotroga fly so you know hidden infest these are the hidden infestation they usually cause field to sto uh, storage carryover infestation and there will be another kind of infestation that is cross infestation you know that is like insect from old stacks or grain lying in cracks and crevices in emptied godowns so these usually cause a horizontal infestation after once you store the grains so these are the photos you can see like uh, previously infested grains or cracks and crevices are the previously left over debris are infested materials which are kept in uh, storage or nearby storage even a small amount of grains which is stored in the neighboring kitchen like even if it is underground that will be enough to attract the uh, uh, insects to your grain storage so if you don't manage them eventually they can multiply and they can damage your entire lot whether it will be in kgs or it will be in tons so coming to the other important aspect that is sources of infestation usually they ask for five marks what are the uh, enlist that uh, different sources of infestation for stored grain pests so this this is the pictorial way i just mentioned to uh, make uh, you understand that is there will be a field carryover infestation or migration what i told like you know uh, cross infestation there will be migration from nearby inoculum cracks and crevices so if they ask you to list them these are the points you can lift uh, uh, and list that, that is first one is field infestation caused by rice weevil brookid grain moth or migration from infested sources you can mention for each point you can mention one or two example based on the amount of uh, uh, marks allotted to the question for migration from infested sources rice we will red floor beetle grain moth and uh, uh, wooden and bamboo granaries previously used like floors and cracks or crevices bins old gunnies with grains nearness to feed rooms and other stock of feed seed received from infested sources or other previous waste grain or seeds temporary storage in villages or neighboring storages a grain stored in open or poorly constructed structures or during transportation also you may expect infestation by uh, 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 from some flying in uh, species of uh, insects so these are the points you can 10 points you can enlist if they ask for five marks So this is brief about field infestation and its field carryover. I am just using brookid as an example. It will be the same case for rice weevil and uh, you know, like uh, I forgot to mention two other species. Uh, you have to remember that is potato tuber moth. Also, I think I did not cover in this uh, uh, presentation. That is Thorimia operculala. You have to remember that species also. That is also example for field to storage. And there will be other pests called uh, sweet potato weevil also. So that also comes from field to storage. so they, those two are the example for fields to storage so uh, uh, just for brief understanding of storage uh, like uh, for example if you take pulses there will be egg laying on pods or seeds and then there will be like uh, typically they select a particular stage of crop you know like for example in case of pulses uh every species prefers a different stage of crops like in case of kopi they prefer matured green part like once the pod completely develop they start turning into brown usually they lay egg on that on that stage or in case of green grab they prefer dry pods at some extent than mature yellow pods 
green pods, but maximum they prefer dry pods. So what happens is they lay eggs and there will be development of insect like up to, they may develop up to grub stage in the field and then you will harvest and you will you will only bring those insect stages to storage. And if you delay harvesting at the field level, sometime you may expect emergence of beetles from the pod. You can see these characteristic uh, circular holes in the field itself. These are the things you have to remember if you want to adopt a proper management methods. So this will be uh, same case in case of rice also. So in case of rice, you will what the beetle makes, female beetles make a scoop on the uh, uh, paddy, hanaskar paddy or so after making scoop, it will lay eggs, then grub start feeding inside, then that will be carried over to storage. So uh, after considering these points about, you know, what are the species, biology and how, what are the types of infestation. So the, it, uh, uh, if you, uh, design your management in sequence in it will be better for stored grain pest management you know you have to divide your management strategy in two ways like pre harvest or pre storage management and post harvest management you know like it will depend on the stage or the kind of infestation you notice so if there is an infestation during field only you can opt these methods and once you store your uh, fresh seeds you feel like you are storing fresh seeds and after that there will be horizontal infestation or cross infestation you can adopt some post harvest management and apart from these two managements there will be already a prophylactic methods that you have to remember so always going for uh, prophylactic methods is very good you know whether insects is there or not so it is better if you disinfect your storage structures receptacles even bags and grains it will be better you can uh, uh, save your grains so the the main mantra for store grain pest management is prevention of seed exposure to infestation you know, the the uh, the longer the time if you store the grains, you have to prevent the grains from exposing. You have to uh, ensure that they are properly sealed or closed in box or containers, whatever. You know, the insects are flying creatures. They will be everywhere. The moment you expose grains, they start attracting towards grains. They start infestation. There are few species which physically damage the bags and enters like rice, we will and other species. But uh, in case of brookids and some other, you know, groundnut beetle, they lack this ability that is puncturing bags and entering inside. If you simply store your stored grains in a plastic cover, a thick, thick plastic, plastic cover, instead of going uh, for like uh, LDP or polypropylene, if you uh, store them in thick like HDP bag or any PPW, uh, if you ensure that the grain stored are completely free of infestation, you can store them for longer period unless there is an entry of insect unless you provide a way to enter. So coming to uh, pre-harvest management, you have to, as, as I already told you, there are three, four species which uh, causes field infestation. So timely harvest is very important. You know, as I mentioned different stages, so you can get information for each crop. What is the uh, preferable crop stage for stored grain pest infestation at field level? So you have to remember that you have to harvest crop timely and you should not you should avoid retaining the harvested heaps for longer times whenever you know the moisture moisture is more we usually retain the heaps for longer time again they, it will attract infestation and if you notice there is an infestation or if you have a fear that there will be infestation in future if you go for a simply 10 percent nsk spray it will be enough to repel these stored grain pests. These stored grain pests are usually susceptible to most of the insect uh, leaving the commercial fumigants they are susceptible to most of the insect. If you spray even NSKE, it will repel away the, it won't attract any kind of infestation at the field level. So you can bring grain safely up to storage. And before storage, you have to ensure the grain moisture, you know, like uh, the ideal grain moisture for stored grain insects is 10 to 12%. So, so it is better if you bring down moisture below nine or 8% that will save your uh, seed viability and also there will not be much infestation from most of the species unless some species which uh, adapt to lower moisture. The rest of the species will be, you can eliminate if the grain moisture is very uh, low. And uh, after this sun drying, this is the most important cost effective and traditional method. You know, if you properly dry the grains, it will eliminate most of the stages which are present, uh, which are moving outside or which are present inside like grubs. So, and timing of sun drying is also very important. What uh, many farmers will do is they start spreading grains in the yards during early morning hours only. That should not be done. 
uh, usually they have to wait until that uh, yard or whatever polythene cover they are using it should get uh, some temperature it should get uh, the temperature of this uh, floor should be increased by like 5 to 6 degrees so the ideal time will be like 10 to uh, 11 am so in that time they use they have to spread the grains so so that will ensure uh, removing of most of the stages due to high temperature and once they come uh, uh, perform this drying process, they should take care of removing grains uh, before like 3.30 or 4 or 5 p.m. before temperature starts coming down. So in that case also, if you uh, 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 retain grains for up to 6 or 7 p.m. again, uh, the floor will get cooled down, grains will get cooled down again, there will be uh, movement of insect from the neighboring to these grains. So this is very important. Usually what they will tell this, we, we are doing every day, we are drying grains till there is infestation. This is the problem. They don't even uh, uh, close the grains during night time. Coming to natural management, uh, you have to remember some traditional you know, powders like hash or dung. There are some plant products which are usually uh, used for seed, uh, the grains which are stored for seed purpose or even for the uh, grains which are for uh, consumption purpose, you can use these materials, no, no problem, like oil treatment with oil or neem leaf powder or turmeric powder. And there is a commercially available inert material, inert product that is diatomous earth, which is nowadays it is, which is being sold by many companies. So if you, if you are storing your grains for seed purpose, then you can use it. So this is very effective method of managing stored grain pests. But, but it is not advisable for the grains which are meant for consumption purpose because these are the nanoparticles, so which usually affect our uh, health. So coming after, once you harvest and uh, disinfest and you, you dry your grains for a proper moisture content, so before storing them in any storage structures, uh, go-downs or your home or farm level storage or kitchen, you have to take some precautions for, uh, uh, for infestation, disinfesting go-down walls, and you have to disinfect the bags or other storage receptacles which you use for storage with simply 10% neem kernel solution or melathion or delta methrin. The detailed dose for these melathion and delta methrin I will tell in the later slides. There will be a ratio you have to mix with water, then there will be a dose after. Using that ratio, there will be a dose per, on per area basis or per liter basis. And you have to maintain good ventilation. If you are storing in large scale storage, good ventilation is very important. And uh, uh, with respect to temperature in the storage go downs, the uh, ideal temperature should be like 25 degrees or 24 degrees. You know, if you maintain temperature between 28 to 32 degrees Celsius, you can you will expect a lot of insect infestation. So it is the ideal temperature for insect. And relative humidity, we cannot. It is very hard to maintain less than percent, uh, less than 15 percent, which is recommended. But you have to ensure that uh, there will be a lower humidity. You know, it is, it is uh, very ideal for insect if there is a higher humidity and even for mold or fungus growth also. And higher humidity sometimes even increases our uh, grain start gaining temperature by 1 to 3% also. That again attracts insects. And with respect to oxygen, so it is the recommended oxygen percent in case of storage, if you are go down our storage structures are airtight, it will be like below 2%. So these stored grain insect will not survive below 2%. So many times they ask question like this, the, the ideal, the unideal or non-ideal oxygen percent for stored grain insect is 2%, 4%, 10%, 15%. So you have to remember this, less than 2% is always ideal to remove or to, to control these uh, stored grain insects. And coming to stacking or uh, uh, stacking of bags in case of go downs, you have to use these wooden planks planks and checking of leakage is also very important and there is a three methods of stacking of bags so you can go for a simple simple method that is overlapping kind of uh, stacking the bags and and there is a standard uh, uh, threshold for stacking number of layers of stacks you know so many people they call it like up to 12 or up to 16 is advisable and you should not st store more than that so below 16 layer will be ideal you know if you increase number of layers there will be increase in the temperature in the bags which are sto which are stored in at the central point so sometimes there are in, uh, instances they will uh, they catch fire so the temperature will, will go go up like that and there is another method for, that is cross method or block method you know for large scale storage structures where aluminum phosphate fumigation is practiced they usually 
follow this cross method or block method. So this will be ideal to fumigate the lots so the, that the phosphine gas can easily pass or reach all the bags. And the other important thing is uh, in many godons they use perky for sampling, you know, while using perky it leaves a lot of uh, open damages. So this will usually attract grain infestation, even though there will be tight or compact kind of uh, the gunny bags available which prevent natural entry of brookid but these kind of holes made by labors will again uh, 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 um, it makes the method or the bag the kind of bag if you use they fail to control the uh, uh, prevent the infestation and for monitoring there is one commercial trap you all know that it is developed by tna that is two in one trap so this trap was developed based on the concept of oxygen you know insect always love air wherever they get oxygen they start moving so based on this principle this insect that this trap attract insect so based on the number of insect uh, trapped in these insect the management decision will be taken so the principle based on principle many times they ask like this the new trap works based on the principle of oxygen or high temperature or moisture so you have to remember that and uh, coming to use of insecticides, as of now, there are only two chemicals left, uh, which are recommended as per S uh, FCI recommendation 2016. Earlier, DDVP was there. Recently, it also got banned. So only available are left chemical are melothian 50 ac and delta methrin 2.5% WP. So these two insecticides, uh, insecticides are used for prophylactic methods, sometimes even for control measures also. As I mentioned, there is a uh, ratio to be followed. In case of melathion, you have to um, uh, mix melathion in 1 is to 100 ratio. That is 1 liter of melathion in 100 liter of solution. This is the final solution you got. From this solution ratio, uh, mixed solution, you have to prepare a dose. That is 3 liters for 100 meter square of area. And again, for recommendation, it varies from different states, you know, like the states with a complete dry condition or the states with complete lower temperature, hard states with higher rainfall areas. So the recommended frequencies are once in three weeks during November to February or every fortnight during March to October or every fortnight throughout the year in case of rest of the states. This, these two frequencies for Jammu, Kashmir, Punjab, Haryana, Delhi, Uttarakhand, Bihar, Jharkhand, Rajasthan, UP, MP and Chhattisgarh. But for rest of the states like Central and Southern India, every, day, every fortnight is uh, recommended. And for delta methrin, the, the ratio for mixing is 40 gram per liter of water. And from that ratio, you have to use this dose. That is three liters of the mixed uh, solution per 100 meters of uh, area. Mm -hmm. And the frequency for this insecticide is once in three months will be better. And uh, delta methrin is usually recommended to spray on the floors, walls, and uh, the surrounding areas of godowns. Melathene is usually recommended for stored lots or bags. And DDVP was uh, earlier recommended for only empty space. Now it is no longer under use. So apart from these prophylactic or uh, other two insecticides, contact insecticides, and this is the very popular inse uh, insecticide. You can call it as a uh, monopoly insecticide for store gain pest management, that is aluminum phosphide. And uh, you have to remember the mode of action of this chemical. So they, this chemical is usually available in two formulations nowadays one you get is tablet based formulation which are usually like three gram tablets and the other formulation is pouch so in uh, so uh, the popular product nowadays you are getting is self fast or quick fast so they are available at 10 gram pouches and usually they are recommended for one ton of grains so if it is grains for one, uh, uh, one ton of grains, three tablets are recommended. Or if you are recommending single tablet, you can say that 3.33 quintals of grains. And if you consider area wise, then 21 tablets are three of three gram each for 28 meter cube area in case of shed fumigation. And as I told you, the mode of action of this insecticide is different. You know, in the, in the original form, it will be available as aluminum phosphide. And once this chemical starts reacting with oxygen, then it will release the phosphine gas along with the other uh, residues. So sometimes they ask phosphine, how much phosphine gas percent will be there and how much uh, ammonia is there, how much carbon dioxide is there. You have to remember those points. And this phosphine gas is highly respiratory 
poison you know it attacks mitochondrial uh, portion of in, in respiration and the success of this fumigant remain uh, uh, depends on the air tightness you have to maintain complete air tightness as i told you this in, uh, chemical loves oxygen wherever it gets oxygen it start moving so even if you are maintaining or if you are fumigating your lots like this using tarpal even a small hole of 1 mm will be enough to remove entire phosphon gas from your lot so you uh, so how many times you fumigate you simply lose money but you won't control any insect and in case of containers it will be fine it will work because containers usually uh, offer a complete air tightness but in case of lot fumigation or stack fumigation you have to be careful and the recommended period for fumigation will be 7 days this is because as i told you most of the insect they are internal feeders there will be hidden stays like grub which will be inside the grain so phosphon was reported to even uh, have toxicity on egg stages even it will reach it will penetrate the grains it will reach even grubs also you know they while boring grub make a pin hole size uh, hole below the egg and it will remain it will remain open with that micro hole the phosphon gas reaches the uh, immature stages so that is the reason they have recommended longer period low dose this will be safer with respect to environment and health concern and to eliminate most of the stages are to eliminate completely coming to other methods you may expect a question on entolectors which comes under mechanical con control uh, method so uh, usually you can expect question like this entolectors are used in flour mills or godowns or grains or some some other option they may give you have to remember that entolectors are used primarily in flour mills and apart from this there are egg removal devices are available and they ask in this way like entolectors are mechanical method of storage best management or physical sometimes they ask like this so you have to remember for mechanical control control entolectors and agrimol devices and there is a alternative method uh, called irradiation method which is very effective and uh, and you can say that you can eliminate every damp stage which are uh, present inside the grain or outside the grain including microorganisms also but only thing is practical applicability here you know this this is not feasible in case of small scale storage structures if you are having large scale storage structures of 1000 metric tons then it is very economical and you can just eliminate whatever the stage you know insect rodents or whatever inside your grains you can simply if you pass through them with this uh, irradiation it will eliminate and the recommended you know rays are like uh, many uh, in many places they use gamma irradiation they use even x rays also so in case of gamma irradiation you have to remember that is cobalt 60 and the recommended dose will be 0.3 to 0.8 depending upon the stored products you know if it is for seed purpose the dose of irradiation should not be more than i think 0.2 kg or 0.3 kg in most of the literature it is not more than 0.3 kg because it will severely affect the viability of the seed but for example for the other processed products or fruit like are stored spices or other powder products you can go up to 0.8 kg the maximum is 0.8 kg which eliminates most of the insect species or fungus or other organisms and the other important alternate method is hermetic storage you have to remember you know like even uh, dr pradhan recommended hermetic storage for one species of stored grain first you have to remember that also he was the first person uh, in india he used that method so hermetic storage is simply creation of asphyxiation condition that is you have to remove most of our the total oxygen present in the containers or storage area and you have to increase the carbon dioxide concentration at some extent so this is aromatic storage so you can expect question on aromatic storage also are in terms of asphyxiation also uh, coming to packaging materials nowadays there will be a lot of talk about packaging materials for safe storage of grain uh, stored grains or stored products as i i i already told if they are asking question on any species you have to remember its nature of damage and symptom you know how it is entering whether it is physically puncturing and entering or it is using natural openings so based on that you have to design or based on the amount of oxygen content or moisture contents it requires based on that you can design back so you know the, uh, the uh, recently re not recently um, or many years ago Purdue University. So they developed a PIX bag that is Purdue Improved Crop Storage. This is a three-layer bag which creates hermetic condition inside the bag. You know, like whatever oxygen is available, 
it will maintain that concentration only and the in, in the in eventually if there is infestation they utilize whatever existing oxygen and in the later part there will be complete exhaust of oxygen available and there will be increased uh, concentration of oxygen so this is how it will just support the first stage or first generation of insect which are present in it then there will not be other next generation a multiplication for next generation because of reduction in oxygen content eventually and apart from this as, as i already told you gunny and jute bags usually in india it is more supported by government policies because you are uh, thinking the uh, uh, livelihood of uh, jute farmers so it is still recommended if they are using gunny bags a simple polythene layer inside the gunny bag would be ideal it, it, it will prevent most of the pulses like brookids and other which cannot uh, puncture physically and uh, there are some ppw bags which can protect your grain for longer time if you ensure that the inside grains are completely fresh and there are like hd bags there are a lot of research on evaluating hdp bags and i think they will be the future of uh, storage uh, packaging materials <clears throat> in case of storage structures there are uh, lots of storage structures but many time they ask list the different storage structures or popular storage structure used in india or outside i have just li listed 11 storage structures that is underground storage so you may expect this question in five marks or, or 10 marks if you are they are asking five marks if you just enlist these 11 or if you know more you, that will be enough and if they are asking for 10 marks just you just you have to briefly mention one sentence about what is this and what is its use example for each storage structure that will give you almost like 99 or more than 9 or 10 marks for you so in that with respect to storage structure pusa bin you can uh, expect objective questions on pusa bin who uh, pusa bin was given by whom or it's some uh, some characteristic features or when it was used or in which area it is it was completely adapted or successful so these kinds of question you you may usually expect in exams and there will be sometimes questions on hapur bins also <clears throat> even pusa cubicle also so you have to remember these uh, lists and uh, the detailed information you can get in many books also so you can go through go among one by one so it is better if you make a short notes for these storage structures like one is list and another is brief points and examples so that will purpose that will serve your purpose for both five marks and ten marks and there will be one question expected question that is methods for detection of hidden infestation so this question is quite oftenly they ask and there are several methods so it will be asked in theory also and objective also in objective usually they ask acid method or ninhydrin method koh method simply they ask in a fill in the blanks these are dash dash and dash are the method used for hidden infestation the the popular answer will be like in many books you see this one acid staining method ninhydrin method or koh method in case of koh method sometimes they ask the concentration of ks to be used that is 10 percent you have to remember and apart from this, these are the methods for detection of hidden infestation you have to remember. So I will share this information. And with respect to detection devices, there are a lot of detection devices. And most important ones are probe trap, pitfall trap, <coughs> two-in-one trap, indicator device, or UV light trap. So you have to remember these points in case of devices. And sometimes they ask the principle behind probe trap or pit, pitfall trap, like uh, like the gravity or other things they will ask and sometimes they ask the applicability of two in one trap in certain conditions <clears throat> and nowadays you know like in the last five years or in the last decade you we, you are seeing this question now only like two uh, twice or thrice they are uh, they are asked that is recent trends in stored grain insect pests so there is no particular or specific uh, uh, a, a paragraphs of our points of answer for this you can prepare your own answer but i have just listed based on some books recent books i have listed few points that you can use to answer this question that is if they ask for <clears throat> recent trends If they ask for uh, recent trends in stored grain pest management, you can mention these points. You can note down these points. That is, first one is monitoring using probe trap or pit wall or UV light trap based on the type of insects available. You know, you have to remember 
for example they ask like this brookits you will have like traps are used for brookits true or false you have to mention that false because this is usually used for lepidopteran storage space for example if they ask for pitfall trap then you have to mention the insect which are moving on grains or grounds and probe trap you know i already told you so it will attract most of the internal are like uh, beet, uh, beetle pests which are moving inside they usually trapped in this like indicator device or delta ferromen trap there will be some specific ferromens they are develop they are available for specific storage space and you can speak about aromatic storage also in recent trends that is exclusion of oxygen as i already told you and for example i told you dr padan he tried first for the first time for kafra beetle management and i already mentioned that is entolators it uses the centrifugal force and uh, it is used for floral males so you can mention in brief so i just mentioned brief points so that it will be useful for you and irradiation method and there are different types of rays and dose i already told you you have to uh, briefly you can write down that then there will be uh, 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 cas sometimes they call cas or mas the modified atmospheric storage or controlled atmos atmospheric storage that is changing relative concentration of oxygen co2 and n2 and there are different ratios recommended for different insect i don't think it is in needed in depth for at this level for ars or jara preparation only thing you have to remember the ratio of oxygen and constant uh, uh, carbon dioxide and then general principle is you have to lower the oxygen concentration and increase the co2 concentration you just if you mention that point that will be enough and next thing is light trap uh, as i already told you it is used for uh, different insect pests and uh, you know for lesser grain borer or red floor beetles or cigarette beetles also they started using uv light so this is very important and for lepidopteran pests like green light different kinds of light if you want if you want to impress the evaluator if it is the question is for 10 marks you can go mention all these points and some of the insect growth regulators which are now you uh, they are using in store that is dicon 2 which contains methoprin or story side 2 that contains reldanol delta methrin or the next method is treating grains with spinosad at 2 ppm is uh, many people even tried this uh, spinosad for brookids also you can get some literature recent literature so this works better for seeds uh, means grains which are stored for seed purpose and use of diatomus or tarsilecan insecticide use of aerosols like methoprene and hydroprene biological control using certain species as i already told you like there are uh, egg parasitoid there are pupal parasitoids there are some predators like there is a uh, uh, pyrocorid bug also available and there is a jailacori species which is available you can mention those examples use of even botanicals and fumigants as a, as i already told you that is aluminum phosphide when with respect to sulfuric acid nowadays it is called as alternative to aluminum phosphate because there are lot of uh, reports about increased resistance in say, many stored pests for aluminum phosphate so in many countries they started using it and in many countries they are evaluating this chemical to select it, to use opt it as a alternative for aluminum phosphate in india it is not under commercial use as of now we are we are still using aluminum phosphate and apart from this if you want to mention more you can speak about different packaging materials used are and other methods so these are all the important aspects what i thought to cover for jrf ars or srf preparation thank you everyone and thank you madam for this opportunity so i am i welcome questions anybody have any doubts and if i miss anything i think you can yes, let me uh, know and let yeah if any students know that why i if i am missing something you can tell so that others can know okay sir thank you so much